Peekaboo. Hello, friends. Do you recognize this tractor right here? This is Otis. There are several books about Otis and they're all wonderful. This one is Otis and the Kittens. This book was written by Lauren Long and it was published by Falomi Books. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Best chance, Falomi? I don't know. Let's find out. I gotta tell you though, this story's a little alarming, but there's a happy ending. It was hot and dry on the farm where the friendly little tractor named Otis lived. Otis couldn't remember the last time it had rained. Farmers all over the valley grew more anxious by the day. Water was in short supply, the ground was hard, and the corn stalks were half as tall as they should have been. Otis spent his afternoons out in the sweltering fields with the farmhands baling straw. Once the load was full with a puff and a chuff, Otis would pull the wagon into the old barn down by the bend at Mud Creek. The farmhands would use a pulley to lift each bale up into the loft where it would be stored for the long winter to come. When the sun had gone over the hill and work was done, Otis was ready to sit in the shade and rest but not Otis's friend, the bull. The bull liked to stand in front of Otis and snort and snarl and huff hot air. Two snorts, a snarl, and a huff. All the animals knew what that meant. The bull was challenging Otis to a tug of war. Otis smiled. His friends were always eager to play, even after a long day of work. One duck wound the end of a rope around the bull's horns. Another duck looped the other end around Otis's steering wheel. The animals then took sides, grabbing on any way they could. Everyone pulled and tugged with all their might. Eventually, Otis would ease up a little bit. He didn't care much about winning. He just liked having fun with his friends. One afternoon, when everyone was up under the shade of the apple tree, Otis spotted something moving down in the field. It looked to be an orange tabby cat. Where did she come from, Otis wondered. He watched as she ran toward the old barn and there he saw something that caused his engine to sputter, a swirl of smoke. Otis raced to the barn with the animals following behind. They discovered flames coming from the loft inside the old barn, a fire. The barn was filled with brittle, dry straw and Otis knew that it wouldn't take long for all of it to burst into flames. Just then, the tabby cat appeared in the barn window. With a putt, puff, puffity chuff, Otis rushed into the burning barn. Inside, the flames were growing and smoke was forming a dark cloud. The cat was pacing back and forth high above on a rafter. Otis chuffed for her to jump down, but the cat wouldn't budge. Instead, she stared down at Otis and belted out the loudest meow Otis had ever heard. What was she trying to tell him? Suddenly, Otis heard a tiny meow from the hayloft, and then another tiny meow, and another, and another, and another, and another. At once, five furry little heads popped up and stared down at him. Kittens! As flames blazed overhead, Otis stood on hind wheels and stretched to the edge of the loft. To a chorus of tiny meows, one by one, the kittens hopped down. The farm animals cheered as Otis emerged from the burning barn with the kittens all over him. But as soon as the mama cat counted their little heads, she meowed frantically back at the barn. 
This time, Otis had no doubt what she was saying. How many more were still in there, he wondered. By then, the top of the barn was engulfed in flames, sending large plumes of smoke into the sky. Otis was afraid, but he gunned his engine, screeched his tires, and dashed back into the burning barn. Inside, the heat was growing worse and it was hard to breathe, but Otis revved his engine and one last little head popped up trembling from fear. Otis puffed a gentle chuff and the kitten climbed down on top of him, hopped to his seat, leapt to the floor and scampered out of the barn to safety. Outside, the animals cheered when they saw another kitten emerge and they watched for Otis to follow. Inside the flames spread by the second. Otis wheeled around to see if any more kittens were left. The old boards of the barn's floor creaked and buckled and moaned. The walls popped. He couldn't wait another second. Just as Otis spotted the exit and raced his wheels to leave, there was a giant crash. The floor collapsed and Otis plunged into the darkness below. Outside, the animals held their breath, waiting for their friend to emerge. Inside, Otis couldn't move. He had fallen into the cluttered lower level of the old barn, and he was covered in dust, debris, and broken planks. Stuck in the hole with the fire raging above, Otis could hardly puff a breath. Then he heard the siren of Fire Chief Douglas and the fire engine. The farmer pulled up and Otis heard him rounding up the animals. Help had arrived. He knew he'd be fine until he heard Fire Chief Douglas holler. Sorry, farmer. The creek's gone dry in the drought and the water supply too low to save this old barn. As long as everyone's safe, we'll have to let her burn. Underneath a pile of broken boards and dust, Otis couldn't see a thing or move a gasket and his heart sank deep inside his engine. The animals had grown wild with fear. The farmer counted them one by one. They were all safe and sound. He couldn't figure out why they were acting so crazy. Suddenly, the little calf bolted for the barn door. Her friends followed right behind. Inside the fiery barn, they spotted Otis stuck down in the hole, covered in boards and dust. His engine was barely running. How could they ever get him out? The bull looked up at the rafters and down at Otis. He stood in front of the hole in the floor and snorted and snarled and huffed hot air. Two snorts, a snarl, and a huff. The animals knew just what that meant. One duck grabbed the pulley rope and wound it around the bull's horns. Another duck flew into the hole and hooked it onto Otis's steering wheel. The bull snorted and tugged and snarled and pulled, but Otis didn't budge. The horse and the cow grabbed the rope behind the bull and together they snorted and tugged and neighed and mooed and it pulled and Otis teetered ever so slightly. The little calf jumped in and tugged and bawled and pulled and Otis raised a bit more. The puppy grabbed the rope behind the little calf and with a fierce arf, tugged and pulled and growled as Otis inched upward. And then came a piercing meow and the sound of Fire Chief Douglas shouting, holy moly, Otis is in there. Hold on tight, everyone. I'm here to help. Fire Chief Douglas grabbed the end of the rope and tugged and pulled and tugged, 
All together, the animals and Fire Chief Douglas lifted Otis higher and higher until he was suspended above the hole. The duck swooped in and pushed him over the edge of the opening to where they could lower him to the floor. Together, everyone pulled the dust and ash-covered tractor out from the burning fire just as parts of the barn began to fall. Then Fire Chief Douglas and his men hosed off Otis and wiped down his frame. The cool water revived Otis and everyone cheered when they heard a faint putt, puff, puttity, chuff. It was music to their ears. The kittens jumped up on top of Otis and crawled all over him. Fire Chief Douglas laughed and said, Farmer, what say we adopt these kittens and their mama? They'd make a mighty fine addition to our firehouse family. Otis puffed a happy chuff. He couldn't think of a better home for his new friends. The end. Phew, I was really worried there. Were you worried? Just a little? Otis always saves the day. You should check out some of the other Otis books. They're really fun. I miss you, friends. Mwah!